this is Passport Necessary. My name is Leila Janti. And I'm Marcus Rosati. And today we're going to be talking about friendships. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Imagine rainbows and sparkles everywhere. <laughs> and the odd unicorn. And the odd unicorn. Um, so anyone who hasn't listened to Passport Necessary, this is a podcast dedicated to talking about being a third culture kid. Henceforward, we will use the acronym TCK. Um, and how it's affected our adult life, how it affected our childhood years. And uh, yeah, I think it's it's interesting because uh, there are a lot of different TCKs who have different experiences. Mm. And even between the two of us, we have very yes. unique experiences with it. Yeah. Um, so I guess let's start with friendship because you didn't travel as much as me, but you did change schools. Yes. Uh, you know, a decent amount was was having long-term friendships was that difficult well the thing was is it, it didn't tend to be that i moved a lot it tended to be that other people moved a lot so you did come, have people coming and going through your life quite mm-hmm. a bit which was one of those things so somebody might be there for a year and then disappear again and sometimes they reappear again after another year so it was one of those things that people would move around and they might come back to the same place or not come back at all um and so mm-hmm. that did mean that you know even though we weren't necessarily moving, that you would have lots and lots of people moving in and out of your life, mm-hmm. probably more so than you would expect. And I think what it does mean is that you do become quite good at trying to make friends with people quickly. Yeah, you can yeah. you can make fast friends pretty easily. Yeah, and it does it does have its upsides. It does also have its downsides because I think it does mean that, generally speaking, you're more willing to be trusting of people. You're more willing to try and believe that people are going to be accepting or at least to an extent kind to you you mm-hmm. have a sort of general belief in the idea that people will be nice the only problem is, is that sometimes in some areas of certain cultures like particularly in the uk you do have trouble with like ending up with people that might be might see this as a kind of a weakness or naivety rather than just simply being a fact of having to get on with people mm-hmm. so they might take advantage of it or whatever it does happen on occasion it's it's an interesting one yeah i i would definitely agree with that um for me, I I moved around a lot, and I wasn't in a school for more than three years. Like every th- no more than three, but a lot of the times so it would be two or one. Um, so, uh, I actually got very used to seeing people leave my life, or me being the person leaving, because going to international schools meant that very frequently there were going to be kids who left. Um, I would be the one leaving. So making like. Yeah long-term friends wasn't a skill that was like especially early on was not something that I focused on yeah um it wasn't until I think I hit like end of middle school towards high school where I was like uh I didn't have any friends from before middle school like they just I just didn't either I lost contact with them or I also the way social media is right now where you can really just like keep touch with people, even though Mm. they're all over the place. I didn't have that. Um, My parents are very staunchly against Facebook uh, (laughs) or like any sort of social media for a long time, which I I get now. (laughs) But I'm older, I'm like, you know what? You did a good thing doing that. (laughs) Um, But yeah, it wasn't until I got to high school where I was like, I I do want to have friends like long term. I want to be able to, keep talking to people even once I leave. Um, So I think it was from then on that I really was very active about keeping in touch with people that mattered to me. Um, I think the thing that's so interesting with having friends who when you travel around a lot and you constantly keep in touch with them, it's, it's the kind of friendship where you don't have to constantly talk to feel connected. Like, yeah exactly yeah i have a friend of mine who's still in japan she came back to the states and then now she's she's back in japan now and you know we would talk maybe maybe once a month sometimes every couple months like we wasn't very often but every time we do talk it's like no time has passed we just catch up really Mm -hmm. quick and then it's like well how are you doing i i think there's the understanding of I do care about you. I just don't have to check in with you every day for you to know that I care. Yeah, exactly. And that's kind of a nice thing. Mm-hmm. In some ways that you know that people are going to be there. 
mm-hmm. in a certain sense. They're not, and they're not going to be unhappy about hearing from you. That's the other thing. Is like you do sometimes. I suppose everybody worries sometimes that they might be being an inconvenience for some people. But I mean, it's it's interesting with this sort of thing. Is, is that you, if you got in touch with someone, they probably wouldn't feel bad about it. Mm-hmm. They'd they'd be happy to hear. I mean, that's kind of those are kind of the people you tend to have on the Facebook anyway. Mm-hmm. You don't. You, it's a bit different with other things. Like it's different from work groups and things like that. You see people like oh, I make friends with people on, in our work and stuff. And they tend to do it through Facebook, and it's it's not very realistic. Mm. If you see what I mean? Yeah, I think I think for me, what's interesting is that I, because of the way I grew up, I have a very hard time, like constantly being in contact with people unless they're right, like yeah. physically in my life day to day or yeah. um, we're working on a project together. So we'll like always be in contact. It's very hard for me to be like, I'm going to speak to this person once mm-hmm. a week, like having like a structured, like I'm going to talk to them. So a lot of the times they'll be like, oh my gosh, I haven't heard from this person in a month. And I'll just yeah. randomly reach out to them and they're like, oh, hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi, friend. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think I I don't know if that's just my natural personality or the way I grew up, but it lend it it lends itself very well to other TCKs who they get it. It's not an oddity mm. to be like completely out of the blue. Hey, how's your life going? I miss yeah, exactly. you. And they're like, Yeah, I miss you too. How have you been? And then it's a whole like two hour conversation. <laughs> yeah. I don't think the thing is also you do kinda of like discover that, you know it's interesting like with people living in different time zones, people living in different cultures as well, because they might go back to the culture that they grew up in or they might go to a different one. Mm-hmm. So you get kind of information from all over the place. And it's a really sort of odd thought that you think, because I do remember once thinking, oh, I haven't got that many friends. And you suddenly went, you do have friends, they're just not here. Mm-hmm. Which is an interesting way of thinking is that, that they're in other places. And mm-hmm. that's just the way it works because of the people you knew as a child or a teenager. And they've just moved around a bit. So they're still there. Mm-hmm. They're just not geographically exactly where you are yeah and i i think that's also very funny because you know especially in a time like now where social media is so prevalent and it's such Mm -hmm. a big part of everyday life and there is such a culture of like showing showing how involved you are showing your friends off and different activities you're doing it's so interesting because a lot of it it feels very performative. I know for some people it's very mm-hmm. legitimate. That's just how they they live their life. But I think for some people it is a little performative. And when you yeah. when you have friends who are so far apart and you don't see them all the time, you really can't be performative like that because you get them when you get them. If they're busy, yeah. okay, well you're not gonna be talking to them that week. Exactly. Like it's it's completely based on just having the time to carve out for these other people in your life. Um, yeah. And I think sometimes people might see, like people who are not TCKs, they might see this as almost flippant or very like, mm-hmm. very casual about friendship. But I don't think it's that. I think it's more that for TCKs, we're so used to people being in and out of our lives that... Yes. Cre- that creating a very very strong friendship bond takes a lot of effort for us yes yes it it's it's you just don't consider it as being a thing necessarily in the same way like you know you, you get the ins- you kind of get the impression you're not going to be brooded in a place for very long or that sort of thing so when you have i think longest term friendships i've had in the uk so sort of like i have one friend i've known for about seven years mm-hmm. we still get on very well we still see each other and then another one I'm still friends with. We've known about each other about three years or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but then it's, you know, they're both in York and so we're both local. And there are a few people that I met in the south of England and still in touch with. Not many, but a couple. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's that sort of thing. It's just, but then again, those friendships become a kind of a distance thing as well. And it's yeah. not too bad. It's not too much of a worry. No, uh, I think because we're used to it. I know uh, when I went to college, I had a lot of friends or people who I was dorming with who I know they had a really hard time with that initial move and that that process of leaving home and leaving their friends because they yeah. weren't necessarily going to schools where their friends were going to so this yeah having to create a new social group was sometimes very overwhelming for them and yeah and like finding their new place their new 
who they are within this new social um, strata could mm-hmm. be stressful for them. Whereas for me, it was just like, okay, I'm moving again. <laughs> it was yeah. just like, I'm so used to it by now that I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to be making friends again, whatever. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think for me, what was hard coming into college was that I felt very out of the loop with a lot of things like right, references yeah. and vocabulary and like ways of interacting. There are a lot of things that like, I just straight up had no idea about because even though I went to an American based schooling system when I was in Paris, it wasn't very culturally American in right, yeah. like pop culture or cultural references. So there were a lot of things that when I came back to the States and went to college, I was so lost, so very confused. <laughs> and my friends would be like, what are you talking about? How do you not know this? You're an American. I'm like, I'm an American who hasn't lived in the States since she was five years <laughs> yeah. old. Like, I'm so thoroughly confused. <laughs> I haven't been here. Please just give me a bit of a break. <laughs> I know you're tired of explaining things, but I need an explanation, yes. please. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose that's the other thing is like... It becomes, I don't know if it's more difficult to find friends, actually, in a certain sense, within... Like, I find it easier to get easy to get on with people. I don't find that a problem, but what I do find a problem is actually finding people I want to be friends with mm, now. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, you do kind of, like, gravitate... I do tend to gravitate towards people who are a little bit off the wall and all that sort of stuff, but then, because the thing is, is that they probably understand that it's like, well, you're off the wall, I'm off the wall, we'll probably be all right, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, not totally mental people obviously but like people who are a little bit sort of like a bit more out there on the fringe sort of, yeah yeah mm-hmm. and a bit more uh, i don't know what the word is but i mean sort of open i don't want to say open-minded it's sort of, they're more um they're more nimble in the ability to just kind of like go all right okay i get it this is different so mm-hmm. this is why you behave like this or this is why you talk like this and you can do the same thing for them you can kind of accommodate for them and they can accommodate for you yeah it's much more difficult to find those sorts of people who are more willing to accept that there might be ways that you do things that are different. Whereas mm-hmm. people who have moved schools or know that they're in international schools tend to probably find that it's just like, yeah, we'll just tolerate it because I mean, it's not even tolerate it. They just, it doesn't, it, most stuff doesn't bother them. Yeah. You know, I, I definitely agree with that. I think that was something that was a, a quick learn for me was that people who, had especially when I got to college that was when I was a big realization for me but people who like lived in their hometown their entire life that was all they knew and that was all they wanted to know I found I found no interest in being friends with them for me I wanted I was more interested in people who wanted to go on adventures who wanted to explore and learn and try new things like I had a lot of friends who I would cook dishes for them because that's one of my ways of showing love and friendship. I like to cook for people and I would cook for them or that I would make them new foods and they would be interested in it. They would want to know more. They would want to see me cook or, you know, participate in it. And that was something where I was like, okay, you guys are good friends because you want to grow and learn and become a a more well-rounded person. I think that's the stuff that's, that's more interesting yeah um yeah someone who's who wants to grow and learn is i think personally yeah, definitely i mean far it's, more interesting as a friend it's one of those things is that if but i think that's kind of part of friendship as well as like trying to grow and learn with people but i mean i think may, maybe it's something that you do in childhood more than you do in adulthood so maybe it's a bit more difficult to, for people as they get past their teenage years that that you know t- to make friends with someone who doesn't do the things the way you do them is probably more difficult especially when you're leaving home and all that sort of stuff because you're trying to sort of like set yourself a sort of sense of identity that away from your parents or whatever and so you don't want to necessarily make too many changes so i think certainly going to university settings it's more difficult for those people to adapt to something that's completely outside their experience mm-hmm. maybe to an extent mm-hmm. yeah no it's 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 super interesting it's kind of weird i so my oldest friends are people that I met when I was in my my last year of middle school, but basically like we solidified yeah. and became better friends once I got to high school, and that was in Japan. And those friends I still talk to today. I'm still very close to them, 
And then in Paris, right? Yeah, I wasn't crazy about that school. First off, it was not like my favorite place to go to school to. Um, but I made like one or two friends that I, I'm still very close to now. Like we talk mm. at least once a week. We always like try and check in on each other. And I remember when I got to college because one of my okay. friends is in Canada and the other one was in Boston at the time. And I would, we would constantly chat with each other and it was like, how are you feeling? How's the experience? And they're <laughs> like, I feel so out of the loop here. And it was like, for once it, for me, I was out of the loop, but it felt right, like yes, kind yes. of everyone else was a little out of the loop because they were also at university and this was a new experience. So for most of the people that I met in college, there was that, that brought us together, which at my, at my schools, international schools, that definitely was part of it. We all knew that someone was going to yeah. leave at some point during the school year because it's an international school. We're all constantly moving around. But I think in university, there was a sense of, okay, we're trying to figure out who we're going to be as adults yeah. because now we're technically officially adults, which is <laughs> weird. <laughs> we're living on our own now for the first time for most of us. Um, yeah. And we have to make friends. <laughs> uh, hey, you want to be my friend? <laughs> like that was that was very helpful for me, kind of going into it, being like, okay, we're kind of all yeah, on the same yeah. page of utter confusion and still trying to figure it out. Yeah, it's just, yeah. <laughs> I remember. I remember. Funnily enough, when the first day I went to university was right. the day I moved in. Because I was still going to school in France and I was working uh, at the American Embassy in France when I was uh, finishing my senior year, uh, when I finished my senior year. So I didn't have time to go to the States to check out colleges. Um, And the college that accepted me, they like they gave me a grant and everything. So I was like, okay, automatically I have to go there. A scholarship. Sorry. So I was like, you know what, I'll just take it and I'll. I'll figure it out when I get there. I don't really care what the school's like. So I get to college. My mom's driving me on campus. And the first couple of people I see was a person with like <laughs> brightly colored, almost like rainbow hair. And then a person who was completely right. in goth in a goth outfit, like full goth. And it's like summer. So I was like, you're dedicated to the cause. And then, and then I saw a drag queen and my mom looked at me and she said, oh, you're going to fit right in. <laughs> Well, I was like, thanks, Mom. <laughs> that's quite a good one, actually. <laughs> I'm like, actually, you're right. <laughs> and I did. I fit. I fitted, you know, fairly yeah, well, as, as well as you can fit in your first semester of college. But that does sound good. It was fun. I liked it. Um, yeah, it was a weird school. Yeah. I mean, it was a very artsy school, so there was a lot of fun, weird stuff that was always happening on campus. I think I think now that I'm older, not in college, you know, a lot of the friendships that get made once you're an adult are from workplace friendships or people that you meet based on like activities that you do. So I do a lot of theater. I meet a lot of people through theater. Those are people that I make connections with. But for me, honestly, it's been very hard outside of like friends that I've made through my partner and like friends that he's already had or friends that I've made through artistic collaboration. It's very hard to make like die hard friends, if that makes sense. Yeah. I know what you mean. Like long-term, very close friends that you would always be around yeah. and that sort of thing. Yeah. It, it is quite difficult. It's funny because I mean like, you know, I like my work colleagues and stuff like that with the place I work, but you never see them, but I mean, again, it's supposed maybe being sort of like that part of that sort of TCK culture means that you don't find it difficult not actually seeing the person mm-hmm. you're communicating with. You can you can kind of just because you're so used to communicating across sort of like emails and things like that, you just sort of do it in the group chats without too much difficulty, and it doesn't mm-hmm. bother you so much. Maybe. I think I think that <laughs> you know, in a time like now with COVID, it kind of is a benefit for us because. We're so used to communicating within yeah. a, a, a digital landscape that it's not weird for us to not see people. I mean, it's still hard, 
do not get me wrong. It really sucks yeah. for me because I'm a very extroverted person. I love being around people and not being able <laughs> to be around people like large groups uh, for this long has been very, very hard. But um, <laughs> right, but yeah. I, I do agree that not seeing people every day doesn't mean that I don't feel close to them. But it also feels yeah. like there's a level of communication that I don't think I'll be able to ever reach, um, like closeness because of being a TCK. I think now that I'm right. an adult, yeah. I have this level of guardedness because there's a part of me that's mm-hmm. like, well, eventually I'll move. So if I become really strong friends with you, I'm going to leave eventually and it's kind of going to be probably most likely up to you to keep up this friendship because I'm going to be moving gotcha. and I'm not going to be thinking about, you know, constantly keeping in contact with the people I'm with. That sounds so callous, but it's, I think just because you move so much, there's so many moving pieces of the physical movement of yeah. going somewhere new that constantly keeping in contact with people in your life from where you were last living it it takes a lot out of you to do that. Yeah, it does. Mhm. Cuz you always have to keep track of your stuff. Just the stuff part of it is is already a lot, but then it's keeping in contact with people and that's that's a very emotionally draining part of it. Yeah, cuz you're always constantly having to think about it and it becomes more of an effort. I suppose. Mm-hmm. And then you almost feel like you're, you're, that's the only downside with social media is that because you're not physically there with your friends who you are close to and you feel an attachment to, you see them going out with other friends and them having fun. Yeah. You remember like what it was like to hang out with them and spend time with them. And it's sometimes more draining to see that as it's like, not that I don't want them to have fun without me. That would be, <laughs> totally ridiculous but there's also this it's it's almost sad because it's like i wish i was there to have fun with them yeah yeah there is that that's but yeah it's just sort of a strange thing but I, s- I suppose there is that good aspect about the social media as we've sort of said is that at least you can see that they're doing all right mm-hmm. that's the thing or at least they appear to be doing all right yeah um, for sure it's it's funny because the other day I was talking to my friend who lives in Japan and I have multiple friends in Japan. It's just <laughs> easier to refer to her that way. Yeah. Um, but I was talking to her and we were going over things that we used to do when we were in high school. We would go to like Arima and go to the bathhouses or we would go like wandering around Sanomiya, which is like a shopping area. Mm-hmm. And I was just thinking back on it. I was like, that was so much fun just being able to wander and just kind of like yeah. go to new places with someone who knew the language, but you yourself don't. So yeah. it's it's a self adventure. I mean, it's just the funny things that you used to get up to. It's like because you could wander around those places at night and it would be all right. And for like these weird, mm-hmm. you could walk down these shopping areas when they were shut in the middle of the night and just wander around them. And it was it was sort of a strange thing. It it but it was a lot of fun as well. Like mm-hmm. Sort of these strange because. Sort of like around the sort of San Nomia area and a bit further on you've got because um, they've got the railway lines which are raised right on, yes uh, above above the housing level or at least above the road level and underneath those they would have shops and things you could just wander through and it was such a strange experience of being sort of like essentially a tunnel mm-hmm. underneath these railway lines you're just wandering around in it in the night it's quite fun I remember doing that with a friend or two a couple of times and that was so much fun and that was the kind of that thing. Is you, it was kind of the adventure of wandering around these places as well. I suppose everybody yeah. has that, but it's, it's. I suppose it's different when you have those friends that you remember in in another country. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. And I think it also. I mean, I hate using the word, but it it's it feels more exotic. Ugh, I hate that word, but <laughs> it feels more exotic because you're in the foreign country where you could probably do the same kind of adventures in your home country. Yes. But because it's your home country, it doesn't feel as special. Yeah. And the thing is, is because those places are so far away mm-hmm. now that you just, that, that they form quite, 
powerful memories of being in a place and being in a space that you can't get to quite so much anymore. Mm-hmm. It's because it's almost like it's almost like locked away somewhere. Mm-hmm. You've just got to find a way of getting back to it in some way. I think even yeah. through your memory sometimes, I find my memory of these sorts of things does sometimes go a bit strange. Like it gets locked away until I need it at some point and it only kind of comes back if somebody reminds me of it in a certain sense. It's quite strange. Yeah, if you get like a sensory feeling of the mm-hmm. place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's interesting because that happens fairly often and I'll try and like explain it to my partner and I'm like, oh yeah, you know, when we were living in Japan or when I was living in Guatemala, blah, blah, we did this. And he's like, oh, that sounds really cool. And I know that he he sees how excited I am about it. Mm-hmm. So he gets excited about it. But yeah. the actual like being there is not in the same place because he yeah. hasn't had that experience. Yeah. Um, that's why I was so excited when I got to take him to France um, mm-hmm. within the first year of us dating. He just came for like two weeks uh, while we were I was living, staying in Paris to see my parents. And... It was really fun because I remember taking him around the city and he actually got to meet some of my friends when I, oh, I was right. living in France. And it was it was just really cool to take him to places that, you know, I had memories of and they they were important to me. And then showing it to my partner and being like, look, this is what I got to do. This <laughs> is things that I did and I was interested in. Um, and that it was a really fun experience for both of us. And I remember when we came back to the States and I was like, did you have fun? He was like, Oh, absolutely. I definitely would not have had as much fun if I was by myself. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, why do you think you wouldn't have been able to do the things you wanted to do? And he was like, well, I don't speak French. So I would have uh, only done the tourist stuff and going with someone who knows the area or at least a language means that you really can do the non touristy things that yes. sometimes are more fun. Well, it feels, I suppose there's something more authentic about it in a way. I mean, this might not mm-hmm. be the wrong way of putting it, but, y- y- you know, off the beaten track, as they say. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was a big part of what we did. I remember I took him to Montmartre. And mm. when we were wandering around Montmartre, we uh, were walking around. And his goal while he was in Paris, he's obsessed with macarons. He loves them. <laughs> it's like one of his favorite desserts. And so every time we would pass by a macaron shop, we, he would stop and he would get like one or two just to try them out. And while we were wandering around Montmartre, we found this tiny place. I swear to you, it was so small, like maybe 10 customers could go in there, maybe. Right, yeah. And that would be like packed. They were so fancily dressed, like the people who are running the <laughs> shop. They were like in full suits. I was like what is going on <laughs> and everything was behind glass casing and so he got some of the macarons and they i have to say were some of the most incredible macarons we had there <laughs> uh while we were in paris and it was because we went to Montmartre randomly and just like wandered on side streets yeah, instead yeah, yeah. of doing like the main road that everyone took i was like yeah i've never been down this way let's just walk it so it was this interesting balance between showing him things that i had done before and then going on our own weird side paths. Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was really fun. And I think it's like stories like that are imp- important and integral within friendship because yeah. at, at least for me, I don't know how it is for other TCK kids, but for me, being able to go on adventures, and when I mean adventures, I mean like going out, at, having activities and like doing something new. Yeah. I think is very important to me with friends, like having experiences together, I think makes a huge difference for me with friends. Yes. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. It's just like building the memories sort of thing, not just the memories, but also like, you know, experience and I suppose there's a kind of a bond in there as well, which is a bit different from maybe some other things. So I suppose it's because it's so fleeting, it kind of does make a difference to how, like, especially if you're moving around a lot, it makes a difference to how you view the friendship in a way. Maybe mm-hmm. it's a bit more intense in certain senses. That, you know, it's much faster to get involved with things. It's much faster that you're trying to build the friendships and the relationships in a certain sense. Yeah, I I definitely feel like I make friends fairly quickly but making like a deeper relationship mm-hmm. i think takes a lot more time for me than maybe a non tck person yeah that might be a good that might be the case for me as well in some ways 
I think, yeah. Yeah, I think, like, the amount of time to, like, have an initial fleeting friendship, like, an easy friendship, surface level, is very quick and easy for Mm -hmm. me. But building, like, a very deep, intense, like, strong friendship, I think, takes a lot of time. Because I think... I think it's hard for me to make sure that the other person that I'm becoming friends with really gets where I'm coming from because they most likely have not had the same experience as I have traveling. So even communication wise, we're not necessarily on the same level. Not that I think I'm better or worse. I just think that like we're not meeting at the same place because our backgrounds are so different. Yeah, that does. Yeah, do you get that as well? from time to time i think the thing is, is it's also funny because it's like coming back to a country that you're supposedly from or should know more about if you'd lived here you would have known more about it it's funny because because you sound like people mm-hmm. they get very confused they, 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 they treat you as if you're a native and it's like well it doesn't really quite work like that and so they're always a mm-hmm. bit surprised when you don't do things or don't behave in certain ways and that that kind of sometimes it's a bit of a bar on making stronger friendships sometimes because you realize that maybe somebody's just not going to get you and it's not their fault but it's just that it might just be too much effort to try Mm -hmm. because they might not make the effort to try either that's the other thing yeah oh absolutely totally totally yeah i that makes sense because it's 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 a two-way street it's all like like any communication it's it's very two-way and i i do agree that it's sometimes harder making friends within your mother country because you're expected to yeah, know. Exactly. But you most likely won't since you didn't yeah. live here. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because I suppose the thing is it also is more effort on your part because what you're doing is you're trying to accommodate for what they want or mm-hmm. understand to be normal, safely in quotation marks, or you know, sort of like cultural norms. And the thing is because you don't have them, you have to build them, but they're not going to do that for you. Because there's no reason that they should, but the thing is, is that you do find that some people will try and sort of like push stuff out of you. Like, no, you can't do that around here because of this. And it's like, well, then why are we? Why there's no point in us being friends then, is there? Because you're not going to accept that aspect of my personality. Mm-hmm. What you're going to do is you're going to insist that it's something that shouldn't be done. And it's like, well, I'm not giving it up. Yeah, yeah. and it's also it's part of you. Yeah, you, you when we don't ask people to change themselves. Well, we don't. You should never ask someone to change themselves for you. It's either you realize very quickly, okay, I don't understand this person and I don't want to put the time and effort to understand them. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. Or you go, okay, this person's very different, but I want to know more. I want to get closer. I want to become friends. So that takes effort on both sides to make sure that the communication is clear and that also you you learn to understand what one another's idiosyncrasies. Exactly, yeah. So yeah, building building friends as a TCK is a, a fun, weird adventure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you know, it does it's have worth it. pluses, yeah. It's, it's got yeah. a lot of stuff to go for it as well. Mm-hmm. But I mean, everyone's going through it. I just think mm-hmm. that with TCKs, we have that added, we have a fun level. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A bonus level of friendship. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the bonus round. Oh my god. You're on difficult mode. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh god. <laughs> well, I th- I think we covered friendship kind of. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if anyone has questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. You can also reach out to me uh, under through t- Twitter. Oh my gosh, through Twitter, my handle is at Layla Gentil. That's L E Y L A G E N T I L. Um, yeah, is there anything else? I don't think so. I don't think so. Not for now. Cool. Well, we'll see you. We'll hear you next time, or you'll hear us next time. <laughs> I have to figure out a way of ever saying goodbye. <laughs> we'll just say thanks for listening. Goodbye. Oh, yeah. Thanks for listening. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye, Marcus. Bye.